Good day, fellow investors. A few weeks ago, we discussed the cheapest S&P 500 stocks, and one of those cheapest stocks that I said it could be a good buy was Warner Bros. Discovery at a market capitalization of 21 billion after it has been absolutely destroyed since the spin. And Serhi here discussed how he's personally loading up on Warner Bros. Discovery too cheap he thinks and I said okay I have to discuss this a little bit deeper because I dug deeper as I wanted to see if this could fit my diversified research platform portfolio where my goal is to have 20 positions there and to see whether this could fit my 20 position portfolio. So we're going to do the standard here, check what kind of stock to buy might this WBD stock be. Now, first a little bit about history. This has been public since 2022, exactly two years now as I'm filming this then. And this is AT&T's spin-off Warner Media merged with Discovery. And when I look at this, you might think, okay, they spun it off because they are great people and they want to give value to shareholders. But AT&T just wanted to get rid of debt and also receive $43 billion in cash to get rid of their debt. So I don't know exactly how this reverse Morris Trust transaction works. But okay, I know that they have injected 49 billion of debt into Warner Bros. Discovery. And that is something very, very interesting to follow. The company has done great, actually. They have repaid 5.4 billion in debt last year. But if we look at revenues a little bit, declining a little bit, EBITDA, okay, improving and free cash flows doing really well, especially with the lower costs with the actors and writers striking. But still, free cash flows on a normalized basis should be around 5 billion. When you compare 5 billion with this, that's a 25% cash flow yield, which makes it an absolutely cheap, great bargain buy from that perspective. However, let's dig a little bit deeper and this is what I wanted to discuss here just to show a little bit how you dig deeper when you have to make a decision whether to buy something, follow something or not. If we look, this company is still losing money. Okay, there are some restructuring charges that are there but even with those we are still losing 1.5 billion in 2022. In 2023, still losing money, and the biggest cost there is depreciation and amortization. And then they also have amortization of fair value step up for content. I don't know how they measure it, but as an investor, yes, I look at the cash flows, but I also want to see those profits, those reinvested profits, because if they live just on past brands that have been amortized, depreciated, and now they are still making cash flow somehow, okay. But that money has been invested so that the new money now is created. That's why I see that huge charge in depreciation and amortization. These are huge, huge charges and somehow you have to cover for those up. I think Buffett discusses this in a few letters. But then again, I look at... The revenues there, okay, this is studios and games will always be volatile. So I would say this is one segment that is volatile if I go to invest in it. Networks are definitely declining, 11% down revenues over the year, and people are not watching television anymore. You're watching YouTube now, so it's a different game, and this will likely continue to decline over time, unfortunately for Warner Bro. And this is a huge chunk of revenues. So we have a declining business. And the third is just a bad business. Direct to consumer, okay, they have their subscribers, but again, not growing, 
not profitable negative EBITDA, they might turn things around by using their huge content, their brands, their Harry Potters and everything. However, it is very hard to know. So you need to know that if you buy this, you have a volatile, a declining and a bad business. So not really something that you can bet your safety on. Yes, there is huge value in the content, in the brands and everything, but that is countered by the huge amount of debt that they are miraculously lowering. And if they keep lowering it for five years, then yes, then you might see a dividend. However, if I look at price to free cash flow compared to everything else out there, is it a buy? Yes you have to say it is a relative buy. Is it an absolute buy? And here my question is, when will I see 2 billion of dividends from this? That's my question. Then I could say, okay, if I see 2 billion of dividends from year five onward, then I could say, okay, it is an absolute buy. Whatever happens with the stock price, I don't care. I will be getting my dividends in the future, in the 10, 20 years, but with the bet, With a declining business and with a volatile business, I cannot be so sure of that. And therefore, it's definitely not a margin of safety buy because of the huge debt out there. So I really wanted to do this video at least, if not anything, just for Serhi and here's always nice comments, but also to show you the decision that I'm not going to put into my diversified stock market research portfolio. Check my research platform if you want to know more.